the prime crew. Come on. This isn't bad news. This is good news. This is great news. This is what they've been waiting on. And I said, Lord, why do you want me to preach this? He said, because for many of my people, the thing you've been waiting on is about to break forth. The thing you've been praying for and working on and scratching after and holding on to is about to break forth in your life. And I am concerned that you are ready to receive the blessing that I I don't know who told y'all to sing that song this morning. I, I don't know how you found out that I was going to be preaching about the blessing that the Lord is about to release on your life. That this is your time and this is your season. How did you know? find out who's wise and who's foolish. They were all virgins. They were all dressed. They were all hand selected. They were all hand picked. They all went to the same place. They all were waiting. They all went to sleep. You couldn't tell who was wise and who was foolish until the cry was made. The thing you've been waiting on is coming. How you react to challenges tells whether you are wise or foolish. You will know who you are by how you respond in the moment of your challenge. Behold, the bridegroom cometh. <laughs> Go ye out to meet him. And then they say, mm. my lamp has gone out. 
I plan on having enough light to go. But I didn't plan on having enough light to wait. <laughs> and I spent, I spent my go oil in my waiting mode. And now it's time to go. And I don't have the strength to produce what it was. The child has come to birth, but mama can't push no more. Just when it's about to happen, that's when you find out whether you are ready or not. When it is about to be released, then you know what you got. All of a sudden, they're in a panic because five of them brought the oil now. Understand, in the Bible days, the oil was in clay containers, so you couldn't see in it. You can't stand on the outside of a clay container and tell how much oil is in it. No more than you can stand on the outside of me and tell how much oil I have in me. <laughs> yeah, the only way you're going to find out how much oil I have is set me a fire. <laughs> and when you put the fire on me, <laughs> then you'll find out what I got to work with. Because it might not appear on the outside what I got on the inside. But up under the heat, when the heat is applied, then you can tell what I got. When the heat hits me and I produce no light, Come on with me, church. That means no matter what, they hit it. It burned for a second. It went out. Hit it again. It burned for a second. It went out. Watch this. They all trim their wicks. Because when you're about to get what you want, you got to be prepared to do some trimming. <laughs> yeah, you got to do some trimming. See, some people don't get it because they won't trim their wig. You always got to give up something to get something. If you don't cut away some stuff and change some stuff and alter some stuff, you're not going to shine at your best while you hold on to your past. You got to let go of what burned up forgetting those things which are behind me and reaching oh uh -huh. and so what, what the Bible says watch it. the Bible says they started trimming the wicks and this is a season for somebody you gotta trim your wick you gotta cut some folk loose yeah you was a part of my life then, and it was wonderful, and it was special. But it, it, this has turned to carbon now. All of it is black and gone and ashy, and I, I got to cut you loose so I'll be ready for what's going to happen next. Look at somebody say, snip, snip. <laughs> you you got to do some cutting this year. You got to do some cutting back this year. You got to trim up some stuff so you'll be ready. Uh, yeah. Got, a, got some sin issues. Got, got to cut them back. God said in times past I winked at it, but I, I'm not winking at it right now. You got, you got to get right about that because where I'm getting ready to take you this year, you got to trim your wick so you'll be lit up and ready to go. Cut it back. Cut it out. It's over. Trim your wick. For somebody is to repent of your sins, trim your wick. For somebody is to get right with God, trim your wick. For somebody is to throw that crack pipe out, trim your wick. For somebody is to clean up your lifestyle, trim your wick. Uh, not because you don't have, not because you don't have an expectation, but because you do have an expectation. That is the motivation to get yourself together because God has promised you too many things up high for you to fall down that low. Trim your wick. But there was, all of them trimmed their wicks. All of them cleaned up their eyes. But there was this problem with this oil. The foolish virgins. Incidentally, the word foolish comes from the same word we get moron. The morons were morons. Because they did not deal in extras. We have a God who deals in excess.
Watch this. He said, I wish I had time to teach this. Let me hear him. He said, I'm able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all that he may ask or think. In other words, I'm not just a God that meets your need. I'm the God that exceeds your need. I'm the God that makes your cup run over. I'm not interested in filling your cup. I want your cup to run over. I want you to have an overflow. I won't just give you two fish and five loaves of bread and feed 5,000. I'm going to give you 12 baskets full left because I don't want you to ever be in the rain. I want you to have excess. I am the God of excess and overflow. If I fill you with the Holy Ghost, I'll fill the room that you're sitting in. I'll fill the house. Oh, if I do it, I'm going to do it right. Somebody holler, increase. Increase. The problem with the morons, the foolish virgins, is that they were operating in enough and not more than enough. They had enough oil if everything went right. Okay. But they had no reserve for when things went wrong. go wrong. The foolish virgins carried the oil in the lantern. Okay. But the Bible does not mention them having another vessel. All right. The wise had oil in the vessel okay. and they had oil in reserve so when oh. their lamps went out they said I expected this so they poured it in their lamp I knew it was going to be tough right here but I can handle it because I have not spent out yet huh. still to come on the Potter's Touch the crack in the door of the theologians called grace okay Grandma called it mercy. It, it, it's just enough time that if you want to get things together, you can. There is a crack in the door. And the Lord told me to tell you, don't let the good times fool you. My mind may be distraught. My body may be right with pain. My enemies may surround me. But